How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're gonna cover a topic of installing a hybrid inverter on your 50 amp RV to have power throughout the entire RV. So this is gonna be somewhat of a, a follow-up video to the one that we had before, but we really focused on the automatic switch, and this one's gonna be a very budget-friendly, ready-available product that you're able to, to get for around 40 bucks to be able to have the same results. So being able to power everything in your RV off of a hybrid inverter. So the last video I did it came with a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions from people trying to clarify, trying to find a device that was available, it was inexpensive, and, and how to hook that up. So we're gonna answer a bunch of those questions today and go through how to install this on your RV. So let's sit down and take a look at the hybrid inverters. Now the capability of hybrid inverters are really impressive. The hybrid inverter that we have is by far my favorite. It's the, the Victron 3000. Uh, for number one, it's a fantastic inverter. Very, very powerful and reliable. Um, it's very customizable. One of the best battery chargers that I've ever had for our RV. Um, very dependable, great internal components, great switches on the inside, very fast to, re to be able to react to switching over power, great customer service. Um, just overall, it's number one on my list for a lot of reasons. But with these hybrid inverters, it's not just a, either we're gonna be on the inverter or we're gonna be plugged into shore power or a generator. We now have a hybrid function where we can be pulling in from shore power and then boosting from the inverter. So we have a different set of circumstances where it's just not either or, we now have an and. So with that and becomes a layer of complexity that we need to pay attention to so that we can have available power throughout the entire RV. We're not picking and choosing which plugs are going to be powered. We have available power throughout the entire RV. So before we dive into figuring out these diagrams and walking you through exactly how this all gets set up, uh, I think it'd be great if we got some basics down and we talked about the 50 amp inverter power coming in. It'll help all this make a lot more sense. So uh, let's take a look at a couple of those things. Now, understanding the 50 amp RV, if we look at the end of a plug, we can see that we have four wires in there. So you can describe this as a, a three wire, 240 volt single phase, or you can say split phase, because what happens is it's a, a split phase. So we have a hot leg on this side of the plug and a hot leg on this side of the plug. So we can have 50 amps on this side and 50 amps on this side. When we're plugged into a 50 amp service, you have the potential of almost 100 amps. So when looking at the RV electrical panel, you can see that one line coming in will feed half the panel and one hot leg coming in will feed the other half of the panel. So you have those two 50 amp breakers in the middle that take those hot legs in and each one will feed the opposite end of the panel there. What happens when you plug in your adapter, say you're using a, a 30 amp adapter and you're, you're plugging that in, we have one hot leg and a neutral, and then we have our ground. And what happens if you look on the back of that plug, if you could see inside of it, there's actually a connection that goes in between those two now hot legs on the 50 amp side of that. So we're, we're basically just taking the 30 amp plug and that hot leg and we're bridging it between the two so that you can have power across both of those. But that doesn't help us when we're setting up a hybrid inverter. We're actually gonna take control of that with a little transfer switch like this. This is the $40 solution. It gives us a switch and a box that this would be able to fit inside of. But if we take the panel off of our hybrid inverter here, we see that we have one hot leg in, a neutral, and a ground. So we don't have room for that additional leg. Now there's some other ones out there that have room for an additional leg, like the GoPower, but it doesn't actually power assist on both legs. So it doesn't, doesn't really help the situation. And there's also some expensive options out there but this one's going to be the most budget friendly with a hybrid inverter we're just gonna take control of where that jumper happens rather than it happening at the pedestal to be able to bridge to give us power throughout all of the RV we're gonna do that in this switch so that we could take advantage of uh, the hybrid functions in this inverter that gives us the ability to when we're plugging into a 30 amp service we can actually use the energy out of the batteries to be able to boost that up to 50 amps and then when we're not drawing that much this will then charge the batteries back up when there's that available power but on the flip side of that when you're using your rv on a 50 amp service you want to take advantage of that split phase being able to have 50 amps on each leg 
which would be position one on our switch. And then when you're connected to a 30 amp or 20 amp service, or just the inverter, you wanna be able to take advantage of where that bridge is taking place. Uh, the, the big part is being able to wire up the switch. We have some jumpers in here, and I'm gonna walk you through on that diagram. You can download it for the automatic switch, the manual switch, powering only half of your RV if you wanted to, or for the 30 amp RV. So all those are available for download, link down in the description. Uh, but let's start by walking through the diagram for the switch to seeing exactly how we wired up. It's important to know when looking at these diagrams that you can't just use a normal automatic transfer switch or a normal transfer switch in these settings because uh, that SPS, the automatic transfer switch for this has smart phase selector equipment inside of there. So it makes it unique compared to a normal transfer switch. And this manual switch is one that allows us to have that bridging at a separate point. So just a normal transfer switch wired up in a normal way will not give us the same result. So let's look at how this manual transfer switch is wired up. Uh, let's pull up this first diagram here and we can dive in. So let's begin on the AC side. So this will be where shore power comes in or if you plug into a generator or an onboard generator like shown here. Uh, this side really isn't 100% necessary. Uh, you could just imagine this as a shore power coming into the system. But if you wanted to know how the onboard generator, where that gets connected to, or a hardwired EMS surge protector, where that would come into the system, that's what the, this area is showing. And then this transfer switch doesn't really have anything to do with the inverter setup. It has to do with selecting between the onboard generator or the shore power. So we can follow this signal path through here and we can look that this is really our main lines coming into the system that is important to us. So we have our two hot legs. We have a red and a black here. We have our neutral, which is this white wire coming in and our ground. So our ground comes into a common bus bar in here and that way just everything is connected for the safety ground in there. We want everything to be connected. Uh, but for the neutral wire, it's very important for this neutral wire to be able to pass through, uh, not go to the RV breaker panel, but go directly to the inverter, the multi-plus inverter. So that is very crucial that it comes and follows this path without being split in any other way so that this can sense properly for the hybrid function. So we can see we have a detail up here showing the inside of that box. Um, just be able to run these wires if you needed to. Uh, if you needed to make a splice in here, trying to figure out how to make all that happen, uh, you're able to make a splice in there, but it's, it's directly connected um, to the inverter. So these are these really simple splices that you can tie in there. So it's just uh, the wire, neutral wire coming in, that main neutral wire, and then the other one would come out and go to the inverter. Now, you need to have these protected though, because you can't just have them in there and open. So you can take some heat shrink and you can heat shrink that around it once you make those connections makes it nice and tight holds everything together and protects it so this is important you can see um, one of the guys that i walk, helped walk through this you can see his connections in there and he has them heat shrinked and the connections are well so nothing's going to short out or bridge anywhere else so you can use these type of connections in order to be able to to make that easier on yourself to run all these wires if you can keep it a solid wire, you can do that too, but uh, sometimes it's easier to cut the wire and make a connection in there. Now we wanna look at that red hot leg going through. So if we look at that coming into the box, we could also do the same thing because we don't want this to go into the transfer switch yet. We can see that we want that to go directly to the inverter first. And once it goes into the inverter, the out of that hot leg will then go into our transfer switch. And then this black hot leg will go directly into the transfer switch. And then these will be distributed properly to the RV breaker panel. Now, if we take a closer look at that detail in the upper left corner to see how that transfer switch is wired, we can see that the even numbers are the in and the odd numbers are the out on this switch. So the even number, we have number two, this is the black hot leg coming into terminal two. And on the inverter side, we have that red hot leg coming into number four. And then we use these jumpers to distribute it. So uh, if we're in position one, we see that we're gonna be receiving this black hot leg 
And then we're also gonna be receiving this red one by these jumpers that are over here. So that in position one, we'll be sending that power out on one and five. The way we have it wired up is power's always gonna go out on one and five on this. So if we have it in position two, this would be if we're uh, using it in a hybrid mode, so a 20, 30 amp connection, or if we're using it just as the inverter. We have that inverter power coming in to number four, and then it gets jumpered also to number eight. That two is isolated over there, so there'll be no power coming in on that. So we don't want any power distributed from that point. So the inverter power or the hybrid power will now be going out on one and five, which goes to our electrical panel. So the way that that looks on the switch is we have our switch here and so you can see the, the different positions on there, but you can see these jumpers. So this is the odd side that's going to be jumping between one and three and then five and seven there. And then on this side, you can see the, the four and the two on there. So this is the number four side. This is the number two side where that black wire would be coming in. And then we have this jumper that jumps across between six and eight. But let's look at the 12 volt DC side and how all this connects in and the changes that you might have. So here we have the battery bank. Uh, oftentimes people will go with a lithium battery bank setup. Um, we have our positive cable coming in on this side of the battery bank. And then on your negative side, you wanna select the opposite end. That way uh, the charging and everything, the way that the batteries are used, it's looked at as one big battery bank rather than pulling off of one end of the battery bank. So put those on opposite ends of the battery bank where your source is. So here we're gonna see that we have our positive lead going to the inverter. We have a switch to disconnect and we have a 400 amp fuse. So uh, on the negative side, we see that that comes out of the inverter over to the load side of the shunt. And then this is the battery side of the shunt. And then this is the only wire connected to the battery bank nothing else even the ground to frame does not connect to the battery it connects to this side of the shunt if anything bypasses the shunt it will not register on the battery monitor so this is all for the battery monitor so that we can see how much power we have left in our battery bank so for this to work properly this is how you would have it set up then you can bring your ground to frame over here. And there's gonna be several things connecting to this side of the shunt. So if it's easier for you to put a bus bar, you can put a bus bar here and it shows you that this is where solar would connect in or if this is where uh, your existing wire that connected to the negative side of the, the battery bank before that goes to the breaker panel, um, this is where that would be so that everything on the DC side is functioning properly. Then on the positive side, we can see that we have uh, the existing connections that were on the battery bank before um, or can connect to the, the battery bank here. If it's easier to have uh, a bus bar so that you don't just get overloaded on this terminal, sometimes it's easier to put in that bus bar, keep things clean and to, to have more areas to make these connections, then you can put in that bus bar here. So this right here is where your existing disconnect, and this is usually an existing fuse that is on the RV. So basically this wire was connected to the, the battery bank before, but now we just take it and we put it on this bus bar so that everything continues to work. These aren't things that you typically need to add. This is just already there and it shows you where that would be in, in the system. So I know that that is a ton of information to pack into this one video, but I hope walking through these diagrams and following each path for those wires and seeing why and how it's run that way will, will help remove a lot of the hurdles that people had with wanting a system like this. So that manual switch, in my opinion, is an excellent option. Uh, it's actually a fantastic thing to have on hand, even if you have that smart phase selector in, in this position, because if we're, something were to go out on that switch on that SPS, uh, you have a manual switch you can pop right into that same location and be able to be up and running in no time. Because basically it's it's almost an identical setup, just one's automatic and one is manual. So on the diagrams, you might see that the, the wire coloring is different uh, between the black and the red, but those are the two hot legs going in. So as long as you don't start crisscrossing in the middle, uh, you can take the SPS diagram, you can make that black wire the red wire instead and make the, the red wire the black wire. So you can, 
it, it doesn't really matter the color between those two. Uh, but you can see that it fits right into that same spot. The other thing with this inverter, with the MultiPlus, like I said, it's the best battery charger that I've ever had in an RV. So you would want to disconnect your converter from the RV breaker panel. So uh, removing that would kind of be the end of this project and, and wrap everything up. So. I hope you guys liked this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.